Hello and welcome to this Dr. Frost Maths video on Key Stage 5 Composite Functions. Now you may have some familiarity with composite functions if you did, for example, the GCSE, but we'll particularly see how we can use composite functions in the context of, say, uh, modulus functions and exponential functions as well, which you wouldn't have encountered if you did GCSE. So what is a composite function? It's basically when you do one function followed by another. So let's just say f of x was equal to 3x plus 1, and let's say g of x was equal to x squared. Then if I wanted to do, say, f g of 4, what that means is that we're initially doing g of 4, and then we're feeding that output into f. So in this particular case, if we work out g of 4 first, g of 4 is 4 squared, which is 16. So now we're going to do f of 16. And then we just do f of 16. So f of 16 will be 3 times 16, which is 48 plus 1 is 49. And diagrammatically, we could think of it as this, that if we had the input 4, we're feeding it through the function g, and then we're feeding it through the function f, and that gave us an output of 49. Now let's apply this to these questions here. We've got f of x is equal to x squared plus 1, and g of x is equal to 2x minus 1. So firstly, we need to determine f of g of 2. Now it may be helpful to add these brackets here because that's what it actually means. It means f of g of 2. So let's do g of 2 first. g of 2 is equal to 2 times 2 minus 1. That's 4 minus 1, which is 3. And then we can just work out f of 3. f of 3 is equal to 3 squared plus 1, which is equal to 10. What about part b? Now we want to find f of g of x. So this will be an expression in terms of x. So if we add these brackets here, we're going to first do f of g of x. Now g of x is just 2x minus 1. And now we're going to feed the 2x minus 1 as the input of f. So instead of doing f of x equals x squared plus 1, we're going to do f of 2x minus 1 equals 2x minus 1 squared plus 1. So we just replace each instance of x with whatever the input is. Just like to find f of 3, we replaced each instance of x with 3. Here we're going to replace each instance of x with 2x minus 1. So we're going to do 2x minus 1 squared plus 1. And let's just expand and simplify. That is 4x squared minus 4x plus 1 plus another 1 is equal to 4x squared minus 4x plus 2. How about 1c? We want to find g of f of x now. Now note, by the way, that g of f of x is not necessarily the same as f of g of x. So we put the brackets around here. We're going to do g of f of x, or f of x is x squared plus 1. And then, as I said before, in g of x, we're now going to replace each instance of x with this input of x squared plus 1. So we're going to do 2 times x, which is now 2 times x squared plus 1 minus 1. Expand that out and simplify. We get 2x squared plus the 2 minus 1. That would be plus 1. And then d, what g squared of x means, that doesn't mean g of x all squared. It basically means g of g of x. And that's how it would usually be written in exam. So that just means you apply g to x and then you apply g again to that output. So if I put the brackets around as usual, I have g of g of x, well g of x is 2x minus 1. And then I'm going to feed that 2x minus 1 as the input to that g. So now I've got g of 2x minus 1 is 2 times 2x minus 1 minus 1. So 2 times 2x minus 1 minus 1. Expand out and simplify, you get 4x minus 2 minus 1 will be minus 3. Now for the second one, you need to know what the modulus function is. Just a reminder, the modulus function is just a function that takes the input and makes it positive even if it was negative. So if you had the modulus of minus 4, that would give you 4. It just makes it positive. If you had the modulus of 3, well, it's already positive, but it just stays positive like that. So 2a, find f of g of 1. Well, we put the brackets around the g of 1. So what is g of 1? g of 1 is 3 minus 4 times 1. That's minus 1. So we're going to do f of minus 1. And then we're going to feed that minus 1 into f. So it's 2 times the modulus of minus 1 plus 3. And that is 2 times 1, because the modulus of minus 1 is just positive 1. It makes it positive. So that's 2 plus 3, which is 5. 
Now 2b, g of g of x, let's work that out first. We've got g of g of x plus g of x squared is equal to zero. And notice the difference between these. This is g of x, the function, all squared, where this means you apply the function g twice. That's very different. So let's work out g of g of x first. We've got g of, well, g of x is 3 minus 4x plus 3 minus 4x all squared equals 0. And then g of 3 minus 4x is 3 minus 4 brackets 3 minus 4x. And then we've still got plus 3 minus 4x squared equals 0. And then we just need to expand out and simplify. So here we have 3, minus 4 times 3 is minus 12, minus 4 times minus 4x is plus 16x. Then if we expand out this bracket squared, it's 9 minus 24x plus 16x squared equals 0. And then let's just simplify this, collect like terms. We've got 16x squared. We've got the 16x minus 24x, which is minus 8x. And then we've also got 3 minus 12 plus the 9, which is just 0. So we get this. And then we could divide both sides by 8 to get 2x squared minus x is equal to 0. Let's factorise out the x to get x brackets 2x minus 1 equals 0. And that gives us two solutions, x is equal to 0 or x is equal to half. And there we go, we've got the two solutions to this equation here. Question three, we've got f of x is e to the x plus two and g of x is equal to ln of x. Determine f of g of x. Now if we put the brackets around the g of x, g of x is equal to ln x, so we've got f of ln x. And then we're feeding that into f, so we've got e to the x, which is e to the ln x plus two. And then if you're familiar with natural logs and the exponential function, we know that e to the x just simplifies to x. What about 4? We've got f of x equals e to the x and g of x equals 3 ln x. Solve g of f of x equals f of g of x. So let's work out each side of this equation. Now g of f of x is g of e to the x. And f of g x is f of g of x is the 3 ln x. Now let's feed e to the x into g. So g of x is 3 ln x, so it's 3 ln e to the x. And f of 3 ln x is e to the power of 3 ln x. Now this is easy to simplify because the e to the power of and the ln of cancel each other out, just leaving the x. But this side is a bit more difficult. The e and the ln are not next to each other, so they don't cancel each other out. But if we use laws of logs to move that 3 to the power, we get e to the power of ln of x cubed, in an, and then they are next to each other, they cancel each other out, and we just get x cubed. So we've now got x cubed, and if we subtract the 3x, minus 3x equals 0. And then if we factorise out x, we get x brackets x squared minus 3 equals 0. And this gives us a solution of 0, and this gives us a solution of plus or minus root 3. However, it gets a tiny bit complicated here, because if x was 0, then when we try to feed it into f of g of x, then if we fed 0 into the ln of x, we can't do ln of 0, so that wouldn't actually be a solution. And similarly, if we try to do f of g of minus root 3, we would feed the minus root 3 into the free ln minus root 3 first, but we can't learn a negative value, so that wouldn't be a solution. So that is going to be the only solution that is actually valid here. And then finally, question 5. If f of x is equal to 3x minus 5 over x plus 1, find f of f of x. So this is just a massive algebra fest. f of f of x is going to be f of 3x minus 5 over x plus 1. So we're going to do f of this. So we're going to replace each instance of x in f with that whole input there. So it's 3 brackets 3x minus 5 over x plus 1, minus 5, all over x plus 1. So 3x minus 5 over x plus 1 plus the 1. So we've substituted this fraction into itself as each instance of x. And now we just need to simplify this. So I don't like the fact that we've got a fraction within a fraction. So I would like to multiply top and bottom of this outer fraction by the x plus 1 of this inner fraction. So if we do that, 
then this just becomes 3 times 3x minus 5 because that gets rid of the x plus 1 there. Now we also need to multiply the 5 by x plus 1, we'll simplify that in a second, over, well that times by x plus 1 just gets rid of that to leave 3x minus 5, and then the 1 times x plus 1 is just plus x plus 1, and now we can just simplify, so we get 9x minus 15 minus 5x minus 5 over 4x minus 4, now that is 4x at the top, and then minus 20 over 4x minus 4. And we could divide top and bottom by 4 to get x minus 5 over x minus 1. So that is the final answer.